Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday morning devotion. Our readings for today, Deuteronomy 31, beginning at verse 30 and on to 32, 14. 2 Corinthians 11, 21b to 33. Luke 19, chapter 19, verses 11 on to 27. Our Psalm is 72. Found on page 558. The collect is for proper 5. Found on page 174. Please join us in our, in our opening hymn. Number 379. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Our service continues on page, from page 32 with the opening sentence and continuing from page 35 following. Worthy are you, Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Let's pray the Jubilati on page 37. O shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now we approach 
God's throne of mercy, seeking forgiveness for those things that we may have done which are not pleasing in His sight. Knowing fully well that our God is merciful, He's more willing to listen to us, to forgive, than we are to pray. Let us pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is number 72, beginning on page 558, psalm number 72. Give to the king justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and the moon endures from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the morn field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. He shall rule from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. His foe shall bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall pay tribute and the kings of Arabia and Seba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who have no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and there shall be their blood in his sight. Long may he live, and may there be given to him gold from Arabia. May prayers be made for him always, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick over all the hilltops. May, it, may its fruit flourish like Lebanon, its grain like grass upon the earth. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord our God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, beginning at verse 30 and on to 32, 14. Then Moses recited the words of this song to the very end in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Give air, O heaven, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop like rain, my speech condense like the dew, like gentle rain on grass, like showers on new growth. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribed greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God without deceit, just and upright is he. Yet his degenerate children 
have dealt falsely with him, a perverse and crooked generation. Do you just re re repay the Lord, O foolish and senseless people? Is not he your father who created you, who made you and established you? Remember the days of old, consider the years long past. As your father, and he will inform you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High appointed the nations, when he divided humankind, he fixed the boundaries of the people according to the numbers of the gods. The Lord's own portion was his people Jacob, his allotted share. He sustained him in the desert land, in howling wilderness waste. He shielded him and cared for him guarded him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stir up its nest and, the, and hovers over its young, as it spreads its wings, takes them up and bears them aloft in its pinions. The Lord alone guided him. No foreign god was with him. He set him atop the heights of the land and fed him with produce of the field. He nursed him with honey from the crags and with oil from flint, flinty rock, curds from herds, and milk from the flocks, with fat of lambs and rams, bash and bulls and goats, together with a choice wheat, you drank fine wine from the blood of grapes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus, found on page 40, of your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you sought our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. A new child shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, beginning at verse 11 and unto 27. As they were listening to this, he went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately, so he said, a nobleman went to a distant country to get royal power for himself and then return. He summoned ten of his slaves and gave them ten pounds and said to them, do business with these until I come back. But the citizens of his country hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to rule over, over us. When he returned, having received royal power, he ordered those slaves to whom he had given the money to be summoned so that he might find out what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Lord, your pound has made ten more pounds. He said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been trustworthy in a very small thing, take charge of ten cities. Then the second came, saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. He said to him, And you rule over five cities. Then the other came, saying, Lord, here is your pound. I wrapped it in a piece of cloth, if I was afraid of you, because you are a harsh man, you take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will judge you by your own words. 
you wicked slave. You know, did you, that I was a harsh man, taking what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow? Why then did you not put my money into the bank? Then when I returned, I would have collected it with interest. He said to the bystanders, Take the pound from him, and give it to the one who has ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. I tell you, all those who have, more will be given. But those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. But as for those enemies of mine, who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and slaughter them in my presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, I thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts on the words of the Gospel reading, this morning Gospel reading. I do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of the despised nobleman told by Jesus must have had a familiar ring to it in the minds of some of his listeners because of close similarity would have been the times of Herod Archelaus, uh, whom the Encyclopedia Britannia records in part that he was the son of Herod the Great and he was named by his father to be heir of a large part of the Judean kingdom. Herod Archelaus was greatly unpopular and despised by the Jewish people. In 4 BC, he went to Rome and successfully defended his title against claims from his brother Philip and a delegation that was sent which accompanied, accompanied Philip. But Emperor Augustus Caesar or Caesar Augustus did not entitle him king, but he, but he gave him a lower rank as governor over provinces, governor of, of governor over numerous provinces. But this entitlement was much to the dismay of the Jewish people that he ruled over. Nonetheless, he got a title and he ruled over them for 10 years. It is claimed that Jesus told the story in Jericho, close to the impressive palace built by the same Achilles himself. The edifice then served as a backdrop or visual aid to Jesus' parable. That being said, may this historical note serve to inform our understanding of the practical nature of the parabolic teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We now turn our attention to the parable. Jesus was near Jerusalem in the town of Jericho. His audience had listened to him teaching concerning salvation and that the Son of Man had come to seek out and save the lost. There were those who listened and were convinced, or they believed, that the kingdom of God would immediately appear. But Jesus channeled their thoughts away from that such a notion. He told them a parable which pointed to the intervening period between the first and second advent when his disciples must be busy continuing his work. He told them of this nobleman who journeyed to a distant country to get royal power for himself and then to return. But before leaving, he called ten of his slaves, gave them each a pound, to do business with it until he returned. But the people of the country 
despised and hated him so much that he sent a delegation to inform the authorities that they do not want this man to rule over them. We can discern now by the parab that the parable, it had its parallel in the life of Archelaus, the life and times of Archelaus. Having been chosen by, his, by Herod to be his successor, but the people rejected him and sent their delegation to Rome in an effort to thwart, to thwart his effort to have him appointed, to have his appointment confirmed. In the parable, Jesus told of the return of the nobleman. He summoned his servants to give account of their stewardship. The first and the second reported having invested and they gained 10, from the one pound, they gained, they gained 10 pounds and 5 pounds respectively. And the nobleman re 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 rewarded them in trusting 10 and 5 cities to their care. He reasoned that and expressed the view that since the first slave had, displays, had, dis that had displayed truthfulness, faithfulness in very small things, he could, he could be in charge of governance they got entrusted to him. And so also the other, the other slave entrusted with responsibility according to the, to, the, to the ability displayed. Because they traded and they were successful, but only a pound, he reasoned that they, will, they are trustworthy enough to be given more responsibility. And so he did. The third servant, however, came with the pound given to him, wrapped in a piece of, wrapped in a piece of cloth. He presented it, he presented only excuses to the nobleman. He said he was harsh and he claimed profit without investing and he harvested in places that he did not sow. To this, the nobleman responded that he will judge him by his own words. Then repeating his accusation that the slave had leveled on him, the nobleman contended that the slave should at least deposited the pound in the bank where it would have yielded some interest. But because he was wicked, he just returned the pound as it was given and nothing more. Then addressing the bystanders, he told them to take the pound away from him and give it to the one who had ten. The bystanders complained that he had already had 10 pounds, that the first slave already had 10 pounds. To their cry of injustice, he replied, that for those who have, more will be given, and those who have nothing, even the little they have, will be taken away. My friends, the fact is, if we fail to use the talents which is given to us, which God gave to us for his purpose, then they would be taken away. On the other hand, God is generous to those who are faithful, trustworthy, and willing to work with whatever he gives them, no matter how small. God is always bountiful to such persons. But there is even greater meaning to this parable. The nobleman is Jesus, the son of the most high God. And he has gone into heaven to await the time when he would return and set up his kingdom on earth. The servants typifies his disciples and even now the wider church. The master has entrusted the church with the gospel, his treasure. In his absence, his servants, now the wider church, is to put the gospel to work so that the words of God and the teachings of Christ 
would yield abundant dividends. For all must account for their stewardship when he returns. Which of the slaves do we represent at this time? For one of the servants, the pound earned substantial reward. For the second, it earned a respectable return. But for the third, it yielded nothing because he thought so very little of what was entrusted to him. He did not even have the time, take the time to invest. What is the value we place on the word of God entrusted to us in the gospel? Is it worth the effort of spreading? Is it worth the effort of investing? Are we putting the good news of the gospel to work that it produces abundantly? Or are we like the third slave? He taught so very little of the treasure of the master that he did nothing. He did not even seek to invest so that he would benefit, he would derive benefits just as the others did who were given the self same pound. We must know that in the case of Archelaus, upon his return from Rome, he rewarded those who supported him, but he murdered his detractors. The story must have served to sensitize the listeners of the dire consequences of betraying and going against the authority of the one appointed by God to rule over his kingdom. It should have also served to embolden those who serve him diligently. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel was given to us. It is God's free gift. It gives assurance to all who believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has blotted out our sins. It tells us that we are no longer slaves, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Galatians 7, 4. It is consoling also and reassuring to note how God does not take the gospel from us even though we may have mismanaged it. He does not order our execution even though we, we, miss you, we may have mismanaged the gospel, the treasure given to us. The fact is, the more we treasure what God has given to us, the more likely we'd come to understand the power, the power which is in it. We may not be so successful as the first or even the second slave in our use of the gospel. But at all costs, we must avoid being like the third slave. It is for us then to go out and to use the gospel so that it will yield a bounty that would be acceptable by God. We must now go out and do as the first or the second slave, working the gospel into the lives of others so that they too will be empowered to continue the work. Someone would have worked the gospel into our lives to bring us where we are. But we must now go out and work the gospel into the lives of others so that it becomes bountiful and the return would be pleasing in the eyes of God. Our work is to bring others, to use the gospel, to bring others into the faith. For this is our mandate. Amen. The Lord be with you.
us now confess our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of your Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, by way of intercession, we continue to pray for our world and our country, still gripped with this virus in spite of the vaccination and we are seeing that the vaccination is having some effect some countries opening up we pray that this good sign would continue in spite of the numerous variants but we know that God is in control that he will put his hand and deal with this situation in his time. And we pray to God that he will assist us in this regard. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We pray that in our country, that our leaders would come up with the right protocols to deal with this situation effectively. But most of all, that the people would listen and they will follow the guidance given. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide. Pray for the continued well-being of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby. In our province, we pray for Archbishop the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. We pray for our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley. We pray for the retired bishops, Calvin, Roland Clive. Praying that God will continue to bless them and strengthen them, that they would forever be good leaders of his people. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, Today, the ninth, we pray for St. Andrew Scuba, for the, for the Reverend Father Carl I. Lynch, the Reverend Claire Sandy Robinson, the Reverend Winston Roberts. We pray for the success of the Diploma in Pastoral Studies and the Diocesan Program, the Institution of Pastoral Care, Codrington College. We pray for the United Theological College of the West Indies. We pray for all seminarians and lay evangelists. In our parish, we continue to pray for our parish priest, Reverend Professor Anderson Maxwell. We pray for his assistant, Reverend Father Titus Akbarali. We pray for the deacons. Finley, Deacon, the Reverend Finley, Reverend Fanfair, and Reverend Pontifex Andre. Praying that God will continue to bless them and strengthen them 
as they minister to his people in, the, in this part of the vineyard. Also remembering our former rector, Canon Jared Hazelwood, that God will continue to bless him and strengthen him. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We bring before God the five congregations in the parish at Oropoon, St. Philip's, the Church of the Transfiguration, St. Aidan's, and the St. Mary's congregation. Father, remember today those who are sick, suffering at home. We pray that they will make good use of this time, enjoying closer to you that they do not see their sickness as a means, as a way to the end, but as a means of communicating with you and drawing closer to you. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the well-being of our citizens, our brothers and sisters abroad, that they will soon be, uh, will return to us. We pray that they will be safe, and they would be of good faith and courage as they remain abroad, as they remain stuck abroad. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We continue to pray, pray for those who have passed and pray that God will grant them his rest. Continue with suffrage A on page 43 of your Book of Common Prayer. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within among all nations and teach your leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and a servant with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us that innocent through us your will will be done. Amen. Our colic is for our five, found on page 174. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our colic is proper five, found on page 174. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding we do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We return to page 45. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, a strength to our life. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us, be with us evermore. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, brothers and sisters, sisters, let us go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.